friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Justina and here I like to make, create, and inspire fun art things with you through my DIYs. As you see by today's title, I have another Valentine's Day Dollar Tree DIY video for you that is super affordable, really easy, and you can also use this as gifts for friends or family members. But before we get started, if you are new here and you haven't yet subscribed, I hope you do that today. All you have to do is click on that big red subscribe button down below. If you already subscriber thank you so much for being here don't forget to click that thumbs up button it really does help out my channel and if you know someone who enjoys valentine's day decor or diys like we do don't forget to share it with at least one person thank you so much i hope you enjoy and with all that being said let's just jump right into it and let's art today So for my first DIY, I have this heart wreath that is already decorated that I purchased from Dollar Tree years ago. Now Dollar Tree has so many different wreath forms now, even in their plus a section that you can purchase, but this one I already had on hand. Now, as you see here, I did break my arrow. I was trying to remove it because I thought I needed to move it out of the way. However, it was attached to the wreath form, so all I needed to do was glue it right back into place and it was perfectly fine. Now that my arrow is fixed, I wanted to decorate my wreath form and to do so, I am using Dollar Tree's Potpourri. They have these out all year long in different types types of fragrances and I picked one that smelled like apple cinnamon. I thought this was perfect to add to my wreath form and hang it on a door either in my front entrance way or even in a bathroom just so that it gives off this nice fragrance when you walk by. I did just dump all of the bags <laughs> next to the wreath form just so it was easier to pick out the pieces that I want. Now I did pick up those bigger pieces that were in the bag and I started gluing them down to the wreath. I am just using my hot glue gun to attach it down to the wreath. This works perfectly fine. And then I will continue adding all of those bigger pieces all around the wreath. Now, after I was done with that, I have some of these foam hearts from Dollar Tree, and I am just going to add three of them to my wreath form. Once again, I am using my hot glue gun to attach them down. Really love how the potpourri adds another layer of texture right on top of the wreath form so it doesn't look like you just purchased a Dollar Tree wreath and then added nothing to it but you can always add this to a bigger wreath to make a bigger statement. Lastly all I did was take some glass filler balls and add them right on top of my wreath form mostly in some of those little pieces that I put down in the potpourri section and once I was done with that that completes this DIY. Once again, I really loved how this wreath turned out. It was simple, easy, and very affordable to do. And I just love the extra layer of texture that the potpourri gives to it. I would love to know what you think about this DIY down in the comment section below. Moving right into our next DIY, Dollar Tree carries these foam hearts every year during Valentine's Day, and I usually pick up a couple of packs because I love decorating with them. This year, I didn't have to purchase any because I had so much leftovers from previous years, so that saved me some money. Now, they are too big for this next DIY, so I want to make them smaller, and to do so, I'm using some of these wooden love hearts, once again from Dollar Tree, to make the perfect size size heart that I need. Now three of them fit on one sheet of these foam hearts so I'm just arranging them so they are equally spaced and I had enough room to trace them out right on top of the foam heart. Now I'm just using a pencil to do this just so I know exactly where I need to cut out each of the hearts and this helps gives me a visual of how much can fit on and where I need to lay the next heart. Once I was done all I needed to do was cut them out and I'm just using a regular pair of scissors to do so. I did the same pattern on both the purple and red hearts and cut them out as well and as you see here they are all cut out. Now Dollar Tree foam hearts do not come in every color. They usually just come in pink, purple, and red. And for this DIY, I wanted to make 
more colors. So I took some craft paint that you could purchase at Dollar Tree, Walmart, wherever you like, and I'm going to start painting right on top of the foam hearts. I first went in with this light blue color and I gave it a couple of coats and waited for it to completely dry. Now you can always skip this step by buying foam in the colors that you like, but I wanted to save some money so I'm using all of the things that I have on hand. I also wanted to make yellow and green hearts so I'm doing the same exact thing. I will add some paint and then when I'm done I will trace out my hearts and cut them out. After I was done these are all the hearts that I cut and painted and I absolutely love the brightness of the colors because I want to make conversation hearts with these foam hearts. The next thing I needed to do was just add the little sayings right on top and I'm using a black Posca paint marker. Now I know the original conversation hearts has red lettering but I really don't like how the red looks on it. I really wanted you to see the words so I am using a black black Posca paint marker. However, you can use whatever color you would like to use on your conversation hearts. Once I was done writing all of my words, I placed the hearts over to the side to dry completely. Next, it's now time to work on the conversation heart box, which I am using a Dollar Tree gift box from their Christmas section. This was the perfect size and the width that I needed to make this DIY, which worked out perfectly. But the only thing is that the box kind of collapses into itself. So to prevent that, I'm using some of Dollar Tree's wooden Jengas in the corners of the box to hold it up straight so the box doesn't collapse onto itself when I add the top right back on top of it. After I was done adding all of the Jenga blocks to the corner, I wanted to paint the top portion of that box completely white. So I'm using my Waverly chalk paint in the color Snow White and I do add a couple of coats right on top of that box. If you do not want to paint your box, you can always use cardstock or scrapbooking paper to cover that Christmas logo. Next, I wanted to create a window and I wanted it to be a heart shape. So so I'm taking one of those foam hearts from Dollar Tree again and I'm using it as a template. I'm laying it down on the inside cover and then I'm going to trace it out using a pencil. That way I know exactly where to cut using my X-Acto knife. Since the box is really thin, this was easy to cut out with an X-Acto knife. However, if you do not have one, you can always use a pair of scissors. You might just have to make a cut in the center and then work your way around it. After I was done, this is how the window looks and I wanted to start decorating on the inside of my box so none of that cardboard would show through. Now I just added the cutout from the original box and a foam heart using some hot glue to attach on the inside. Like I mentioned, I didn't want to show any of that cardboard and you won't be able to see any of those pieces, but I still wanted to make sure it was nice and covered. Now some of the edges did bow in in just a little so I did add a dollop of hot glue to those areas and push down firmly so that you won't be able to see that either. Then when I was done with that, it was now time to add my conversation hearts to its box. Now there are so many different ways that you can add these to the inside of the box. You can use hot glue, you can use school glue, and you can use tape. I didn't want the hot glue to show on my conversation hearts since the foam is so thin it tends to burn through it so I am using some double-sided tape. I am using some popsicle sticks and some square wooden pieces from Dollar Tree to add on the inside of the box using my hot glue gun, but then I'm using that foam tape to attach the heart down to those pieces. I will continue adding all of my conversation hearts inside of my box until it was completely filled. For the last bit of details, I'm going in with my Posca paint markers and drawing on the box itself. I first went in with a red Posca paint marker and started making a border around my heart window. Then I took that same marker and started to write out the word sweethearts right on the top of the box to mimic the sweetheart conversation box that you see pretty much everywhere now. 
If you are not confident in your handwriting like I am, you can always use your Cricut machine or even print out the word and cut it and paste it down. Once I was done writing out my words, the last thing I wanted to add was two foam hearts from Dollar Tree using my hot glue gun and I just added it to the bottom right hand corner. But once I was finished, that completes this DIY. I absolutely loved how this DIY turned out. I did go back and add more detail to the box itself using Posca paint markers in the color blue and purple just to give the box a little bit more interest because it was looking a little plain to me. But I, nonetheless, I really loved how this turned out. I would love to know what you think about this DIY down in the comment section below. Our next DIY is really simple and easy to make. All you are going to need is two different signs with two different sizes. Preferably one needs to be taller than the other. Now you can use Dollar Tree signs like I am doing here. I have a Valentine's Day sign and a Christmas sign that I'm repurposing. I had these signs on hand so I didn't have to purchase anything new. You can always use cardboard if you need to or even some um, foam board from Dollar Tree as well. Just cut it down to size. After I removed all all of the tags from it. I do want to paint them in two different colors. For my first one, I'm going in with my Folk Art Home Decor chalk paint in the color Imperial Red. I am painting the back of the signs so that I have a clear canvas to work on, and I do give each one of those signs a couple of coats of the paint. Now you can always use scrapbooking paper or even gift wrapping paper from Dollar Tree if you do not want to paint your signs. For for my second sign, I did paint it in this light pink color and I gave it a couple of coats as well. I did set those off to the side to completely dry. Now that they are dry, I wanted to start decorating both of my signs. I first started with my longer signs and I'm going to add these extra hearts that I cut out earlier to place on top. I'm just seeing which color I want on the top and which one I want on the bottom and I like to, this one the best. So to attach my hearts once again, Again, to the board I am not going to use hot glue because this is really thin foam and I don't want it to burn or bubble over so I'm adding this foam sticker tape right onto the back of it and then I place it right down on my board and I will continue doing this for all of the hearts now for my smaller sign, I'm just taking a pencil and sketching in the word B. I like using a pencil first so I know where the best placement of each letter will go. If you are not confident in free drawing your letters in, you can always use a Cricut machine or you can print out a letter and glue it on. Since it's only two letters, I am just freehanding it. Next, I'm taking a purple Posca paint marker and I'm just going over the lines that I've created with the pencil. I do thicken them up with the purple marker and then I add some black um, shadowing around the purple marker. Once I was done with that, I then moved on to my longer sign with the hearts and I'm adding poster stickers right in the middle of those hearts, which will spell out mine. Now you can buy poster stickers at Dollar Tree or any craft store as well. And once again, you can always print them out for, at home for free and then glue them on. For the last bit of detail, I'm taking a black Posca paint marker and just adding squiggly lines to the outer edge of each sign just to give it a little bit more character and for the sign not to look so flat. Next, I wanted to add both signs together to make a larger sign, and to do so, I'm just using my hot glue gun, adding a nice dollop of hot glue to the side, and add the B right on top of the sign that says mine. Lastly, to have this a freestanding sign, I have some of these blocks that I'm just hot gluing to place, and that completes this DIY. I really enjoyed how the sign turned out and as you see here, it can stand up on its own. I really like the bright colors around this type of holiday, but if these aren't your colors, you can always switch it up to your home decor. I would love to know what you think about this DIY down in the comment section below. 
All right, friends, that completes today's DIYs. I had a blast making each and every one of these today, and each one are so cute and adorable. I am so happy to add them to my Valentine's Day decor. I would love to know which one was your favorite down in the comment section below. Remember, friends, if you are new here and you haven't yet subscribed, I hope you do that today. All you have to do is click on that big red subscribe button down below. It is totally free, but don't forget to click on the bell notifications so that YouTube can always notify you every time I upload a new video. Plus, I would love for you to be part of our virtual art family here. If you are already a subscriber, thank you so much. I do appreciate each and every one of you being here. Don't forget to smash that thumbs up button. It really does help out my channel. And if you would like to see more photos and extra pictures of every DIY, especially ones from today, don't forget to check out my other socials. Thank you all so much for watching. I really hope you enjoy. And as always, I will see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.